Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be creating a simple bar chart in the browser using d3.js. This bar chart is just going to visualize some data that shows different people's scores in an exam. If you're not familiar with d3.js, I definitely recommend heading over to their website to see some of the cool things people have done using this library. We need to copy this script tag from their homepage and this is going to allow us to use their library on our web page. So I've just created a simple HTML file. All it has is a h1 tag and I'm going to paste the reference to the library in the head tag like this. So now we'll be able to use d3.js in our JavaScript. I'm also going to create another div inside here and I'm going to give it an ID of d3 container and all of our d3 elements are going to go inside this. I'm going to make it self-closing and the last thing I need to do for now in this HTML file is add a tag for another JavaScript file we're going to add and this file is just going to be called index.js. If I save that I'm just going to create this file now which index.js and this will create our JavaScript file. Now I've opened up this HTML file in the browser and we can see we just have this h1 tag. If I was to add or make a change here and refresh we can see that we get this change. So I'm going to delete that for now and refresh. And now we're ready to get started. If I can close this script tag first, that would help. Cool. So now let's get started writing our JavaScript. The first thing we're going to do is define the data that we want to display. So as I said, this data is just going to show the scores that different people got in exams. So we're going to have the person's name and their score. And for now, I'm just going to create three entries. Simon, Mary and John. And you could get this data from a file, a CSV file, a JSON file, or you could also get it from an API over the internet. But for simplicity, I'm just going to be getting this data using this variable. So now that we have our data, the next thing we want to do is create an SVG that's going to hold our bar chart. So first of all, I'm going to define the height, the width and the margin. So we're going to give the width 800 and we're going to say the height is 400 and we're also going to give it a margin and the top is going to be 50, bottom 50 left 50 and right 50 as well. Next we're going to create our SVG and to do that we're going to select the div that we created before with an ID of d3 container so to select that we're going to use the selector for ID like that and we're going to append an SVG. And we need to give this SVG three attributes. We need to give it a height, a width, and a view box. So the height is going to be the height that we defined above minus the margin dot top minus the margin dot bottom and similar with the width it's going to be the width we defined above minus the margin dot left minus the margin dot right and the view box takes an array the first two elements are going to be zero and zero and then we're going to give it the width and the height so now that we've created our SVG we could actually open up the developer console here and if we refresh we should actually be able to see that our SVG has been attached and we can see we have our SVG now. So next we're going to create our scale. Our bar chart is going to be inside this SVG and we need to define a scale for the x-axis and for the y-axis. So to do that we're going to say const x equals d3.scaleband and we're going to give it a domain 
which is the range of elements in our data.length. So this is just creating an array from 0, 1, 2, 3, right up to the length of our data. So this is dynamic. If I was to add some more elements in here, this will be able to handle that. And we're also going to give it a range, which again is an array, and it's going to be margin.left and width minus margin.right. And we're also going to give the x-axis some padding. We just give it 0 0.1. So now we've defined our x scale, we're going to do the same thing for y, except this time it's going to be d3.scale linear. We're going to give it a domain, which is an array from 0 to 100, because we know that these scores are going to be anywhere between 0 and 100, so that's our scale for the y axis. And we're also going to give it a range, which is going to be an array again, height minus margin dot bottom. And the second element is just going to be margin dot top. So now that we've defined our X and our Y scale, we're ready to start creating the bars for our chart. So to do that, we're going to use the SVG that we created before up here. And we're going to append some more elements onto it. We're going to append G. And we're going to give these a fill or an attribute of fill. And the value is going to be royal blue, which is just a nice color. And we're going to select all the rectangles using select all rect. And we're going to pass in our data. As we're passing it in, we're going to sort it using data.sort. And we're passing a function into this, which is going to sort our data for us using d3.descending, using a.score and b.score. So this is going to compare all of the scores of the different people and it's going to sort them in descending order. So the first bar is going to be the biggest, the second smaller and going down. And now to each of these data we're going to join a rect and these rectangles are going to have attributes again. So we're going to give it an x attribute and a y attribute, a height And a width. So x is going to be using the scale that we created before. We're passing in data and the index and it's going to use the scale we created for our x-axis using the index and this is just going to place each of these bars in the correct position. So the first element is going to be here, second here and the third here. For y it's going to use our score instead. So we're passing in to the y scale we created and we're going to use d.score. For the height, again we're going to use d, we're going to pass 0 into our y scale and we're going to minus our y scale using d.score. For the width, we're going to use our x scale dot bandwidth and this is going to calculate the correct width for us for each of these bars. If we save that and at the bottom if we add svg.node this is going to draw our bars for us, or hopefully will. So if I refresh this page, we can see that now we have these cool three bars, uh, which are showing the scores for each of the people. Just to show that it's completely dynamic, I can add someone else here. I'm going to give him a score of 89. If we save, they should still be ordered in descending order. So if I hit refresh, we now have four. And we can see Peter's is here, or Mary's is here, then Peter's, then Simon's, and then John's. So these bars are great, but it's very difficult to understand what they're trying to show us. So next, I'm going to add an x-axis and a y-axis, which is going to explain what the bars are showing us. I'm going to x out of this to make it a bit bigger, and we're going to create a function for our x-axis and our y-axis. First of all, function x-axis, and we're going to be passing in g, and we're going to do the same thing for our y-axis. So for the x-axis first, this is going to show the people's names along the bottom. So we're going to use g.call d3.axis bottom. And we're passing in our scale x 
and we're going to format it as ticks. And we're going to pass in the index of the element, and then we're just going to display that element's name. So this is going to show the name that we defined up above. Now if I append this at the bottom, using svg.append g and call this using my x-axis, we should have some sort of x-axis shown here. So right now it's shown at the top, so to show it at the bottom we're going to need to transform it to bring it down. To do that I'm going to add a transform attribute here. And I'm going to translate this. It's going to be translated zero along the x-axis and on the y-axis we need to translate it using height minus margin dot bottom. So if I save that, I'm going to make this a bit wider and refresh. This should be transformed to the bottom now. And it is. The font is actually a little bit small, so we can also make that bigger, giving it another attribute which is font size and let's just pass in 20 pixels. So this should make the font a bit bigger and it did. So now our x-axis is showing us the different people. Now on our y-axis we want to be able to show what score they got. So something similar we're going to be using g dot attribute. Again we're going to need to transform this using the transform and we're going to translate using margin.left. On the x-axis and on the y-axis, we don't need to do anything. So now we're going to call d3, and we want this axis to be on the left, so we're going to use axis left, and pass in our y-scale. And again, we're going to add our ticks using null and data.format. So this is going to format the data we will, the way we want it. And I forgot to add it in the same as with the x-axis. We need to do that for the y-axis. Save, refresh. I may seem to have made a typo here. This should be ticks. I save and refresh. We can see that we have our y-axis and our x-axis. And the font on the y-axis is a little bit small. So let's do the same thing as we did above. save and refresh and now we have our bar chart so this bar chart is cool but it's very static we'd like to have some sort of responsiveness when the user is hovering over different things to do that it's very simple we can just add another attribute to our rectangles called a class and we can give them a class of rectangle and now that we have this class of rectangle over in our html we're going to add some style And in this style, we can select this class of rectangle. And we can say, whenever someone is hovering over an element with this class, we want the opacity to change to 0 0.66. So if we do that and refresh, now whenever someone hovers over these elements, the opacity changes. So this is a cool, simple bar chart using d3.js. If you're interested in the source code, it's up on GitHub. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.